six early warning signs that you are backsliding. Catch this before it catches you. Jesus wants us to walk forward with Him and the enemy will try to put these six traps that we will backslide from Jesus and walk away from pursuing Him further. Now, sign number one is when you begin to focus more on your love for Jesus than His love for you. At first, it seems like, well, what is wrong with that? I mean, we are commanded to love the Lord, our God, with all our heart and all our soul, all our mind. But I want to remind you of an apostle of Jesus, Peter, who before he denied Jesus three times, he was overconfident in his ability to be faithful to Jesus. In Matthew 26, verses 33 to 34, we see Peter, and I'm going to summarize it, he was overconfident in his ability to stay faithful to Christ. He focused on his love for Jesus more than Jesus' love for him. And if you compare Peter with John, you will see that in the Gospel of John, John constantly make references to himself as a disciple Jesus loved. John wasn't focusing so much on his love for Jesus as much as on Jesus' love for John. No wonder why John in 1 John 4.19, he says we love him because he first loved us. Before you backslide, you would typically take your eyes off of Jesus and focus your eyes on yourself trying to please Jesus in your own strength. You will begin to make empty promises instead of living out of God's presence. You will actually try to earn God's love instead of living out of God's love. You will find yourself living more in your emotion than in your devotion. And your passion for God will typically lack compassion for people. Remember, you are not the source of your love for Jesus. Jesus is the source. So focus more on His love for you. The second sign and that is when your prayer life goes to sleep. Again, going back to Peter, our favored apostle backslider, Matthew 26 verse 40, we see that Jesus invites His disciples to pray with Him and He returns and finds Him sleeping and He says to Peter, could you not watch with me for an hour? But if you look at Luke chapter 22 verses 31 and 32, you will see that Jesus refers to Peter by his old name, Simon, Simon. Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as weed. But I prayed for you that your faith shall not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Jesus is foreseeing that Peter will backslide. Peter will be going through some challenging times and Jesus calls him by his old name. That's the name Jesus changed. I find it interesting because when we go to sleep in our prayer, we tend to wake up our old habits, our old life. When your prayer life goes to sleep, your past life wakes up. One of the signals, one of the signs that you're beginning to backslide when you are slacking with your devotional life. When you backslide with your prayer time, with your quiet time, with your Bible reading time, it's a matter of time you begin to backslide also in your morality, in your devotion and in your commitment to the Lord. The third sign that you might be backsliding is when you follow Jesus at a distance by avoiding sacrifice. Matthew 26 verse 58 has this very interesting scripture. It says, but Peter followed him at a distance. See, as long as Jesus was healing the sick, raising the dead, walking on water and doing amazing things, Peter followed Jesus very close. But now there's a cost that's attached. Peter might lose his life. So Peter is counting the cost and realizing I'm not ready to die and he's following him at a distance. Matthew 16, 24 and 25, it says, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. We follow Jesus when it brings success, but when it costs a sacrifice, we play safe by following Him at a distance. And that is a red flag and that is a sign we are about to backslide. If your Christian life is all about you and it's not about the cross, you are not growing in Jesus. You are following Him at a distance. Number four, we numb ourselves with world's pleasures. We see Peter, 
he's sleeping when he's supposed to be praying we see him following Jesus at a distance and we see this fourth thing that happens with Peter, a red flag, a sign of backsliding. And that is the Bible says that in Mark chapter 14, verse 54, but Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. We see the similar mention in John 18, 18, where he warmed himself at the fire that the servants of the high priest, people who persecuted Jesus, were warming themselves at. You know, he was no longer at the holy fire. He was now at the world's fire. You know, there's pleasure of sin and there's pleasure in God's presence. When you don't no longer enjoy the presence of Jesus, you're not experiencing the pleasure of His presence. Satan will offer the pleasure of the world and it will be difficult to say no to that pleasure when you have no longer been enjoying His presence. And we begin to numb ourselves with entertainment. We begin to numb ourselves. Some people go with the drugs, some people go with alcohol, some people go with other things. But the whole idea is that we're trying to fit in into a culture. We're trying to be conformed to this culture. And it's one of the flags that we are on the way out, on the way of denouncing, renouncing, walking away from practicing our faith what we call as Christians backsliding. The fifth sign that you're about to backslide or you are backsliding is when you're drowning in doubt that God's Word is truth. In fact, I would say this is one of the common signs. Satan came with that appeal to Eve in the garden, Genesis 3.1 and he said, has God indeed said? Uh, Satan did a similar thing with Christ in Matthew chapter 4 where he puts a question mark where God has an exclamation mark because Satan cannot defeat you until he disarms you and he cannot disarm you until he casts doubt on the fundamental of your belief and that is God's Word. Doubt is not absence of faith. It's the questioning of faith. Doubt can become a sin if it leads you away from God. But doubt is not a sin. Doubt is not the same as unbelief. Doubt is questioning what you believe. Unbelief is being determined to refuse to believe. Doubt is a struggle faced by a believer. Unbelief is a condition of the unbeliever. Doubt says, I can't believe, I need proof. Unbelief says, I won't believe despite of evidence. Doubt is honest. Unbelief is stubborn. Doubt is looking for the light. Unbelief is content with darkness. Doubt is born out of a troubled mind and a broken heart. Unbelief is an act of will. And Jesus will help doubters, but He cannot tolerate unbelief. I want to encourage you today. If you find yourself in doubt, questioning God's Word, go to God with your doubt. Do not go to Google. Do not go to the world. Now, there's nothing wrong. There's many good apologists and books that can help you to clarify some of your questions. But if that doubt leads you to more skepticism, leads you to more toxic, feeding yourself with toxic information about church, about people, you can find yourself in unbelief. And the devil will use the doubt to bring you into unbelief so that then he can trap you in spiritual death. The sixth and the final sign, and that is when you distance yourself from other believers. Christians who attend the church casually usually have a casual commitment to their faith. Infrequent attendance is often a sign of a deluded devotion. A Christian without a church is like a student without going to school. It's like a soldier who doesn't join an army. It's a citizen who doesn't vote. A salesman who has no customers. An explorer with no base camp. A seaman on a ship without a crew. A businessman on a deserted island. An author without readers. A parent without a family. A football player without a team. A scientist who doesn't share his findings. A bee without a hive. We are members of the body of Jesus. We need to assemble. 1 Corinthians 12, 27. We are living stones. We need to assemble. 1 Peter 2, 5. Think of when you order something in the store, let's say a furniture. It comes in broken pieces. You need to assemble it and then it becomes one piece, one whole. That's how we are as Christians. We are small pieces and we need to assemble. We need to be together. When you isolate yourself, when you separate yourself from the body of Christ for whatever reason, 
offense, you know, maybe there's bitterness, maybe there's apathy, maybe there's self-reliance, maybe government tells you not to gather. Whatever that reason is, it's a demonic trap to help you backslide. If you remember the prodigal son, what is the one of the first things that he did when he took the money from his father? Is he left his father and his brother. One of the signs that you're backsliding is when you are separating yourself, isolating yourself from other believers. Whatever your reasons are, those reasons do not justify and do not protect you from what about to happen to your spiritual life because you separate from other believers. Sometimes we need to distance ourselves from a toxic church, but we shouldn't separate ourselves from the church of Jesus Christ. We should belong to a local body, stay connected to a group of people so that we can grow in Jesus. Because remember, we're not an island. We are a body of Jesus Christ. Now, what I love about the Lord is God is not only a Savior who saves sinners. He's also a Redeemer who restores backsliders. The Father embraced His backslidden Son when He came back with repentance. Jesus restored Peter when He came to him and he couldn't catch anything during the whole night. Maybe you're watching and you're noticing these early signs that you are already backsliding. It's not too late for you. Come back to the Lord. Repent today. Renounce this, the ways of sin. Embrace the way of Jesus. Embrace the cross. Embrace His love for you. Take your eyes off of yourself. Pick up your devotional life again. Follow Jesus even if it costs you something, looking unto Him the author and the finisher of your faith. And if you've done something that the enemy uses as a means to guilt trip you, come to the cross, experience forgiveness that only Jesus can offer. Warm yourself at the holy fire. Experience the pleasure of God's presence instead of the pleasure of sin. Commit yourself to being in the community of believers so you can grow and mature in your walk with Jesus. These six early signs they lead people away from Jesus. But I believe the Lord is going to draw you back because you watch this video, because the Holy Spirit is convicting you and you will not backslide, but you will walk toward the Lord and grow in the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know in the comments below if any of these signs happened to you. Have you experienced backsliding and the Lord brought a restoration, reconciliation and the renewal in your spiritual walk? Share your journey with us. Thank you. Until next time.